we can start. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I am T1 Glistener Elf. A thousand subs. That's just... It's mind-blowing. To think that not only a thousand people watch me, but actually subscribe? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it came up to me a lot more quickly than I would have... I would have liked. I'm sorry about the not so great setup. If you can if you can ignore all this space over here <laughs> and the light switch down here. Uh, I hope that you'll enjoy. I want to do, do something random, something special for you. I I know that's one of those what are the YouTube fads? You you do uh, facts about me, which is what this is. You do a uh, draw my life. Um, what else? Those just regular YouTube videos that everyone does when they get to a certain point. Um, I don't know, we'll come up with something else. But anyway, what I'm doing for you, just some random questions about me. Uh, most of which are mine being asked to myself that I imagine that you would want to know. Uh, if you're a regular follower of this channel. Or if you just, if you just want to know about this hair. There's a question in there about that. There's actually more than one question in there about that. Or if you want to know about the cuteness, the itty bitty teeny tiny little baby, there's a couple questions about that by all means, and so on and so forth. I'm going to try to do this without cuts. Uh, actually, actually, it doesn't matter until I get later on. You'll see why I have a little bit of a challenge in here. Uh, but to start, when did I start playing Magic? I started actually playing Magic back in Lorwyn, back when that was the set that came out. And it did. I couldn't actually buy my own cards until Shards of Alara. This was when I was in high school. This was my. I want to say it started in my junior year, and I actually bought cards in my senior year. Uh, my parents thought that everything basically was satanic. So, I kid you not. Uh, this may be the most extreme example, starting off. But Pokemon to them was satanic because it had evolution in it. So I had those parents, and naturally, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Harry Potter, and Magic, and D&D, and whatever else, it's all satanic. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to play until I had my own job, and could buy my own cards, and they didn't have to know about it. Um, but it's not like I was actually doing anything bad, I was playing Magic the Gathering. Uh, Actually, I started even a little bit earlier with Yu-Gi-Oh! I actually got into playing that uh, just a matter of months beforehand, I suppose. And that was fun, too. Uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to Yu-Gi-Oh! in a bit. What's my favorite color? If I had to pick a single color across formats um, for flavor, for power, for it not being what Brie likes, then I'd have to say green. Green is my favorite color. I like the power of big creatures. I like the versatility of green. It has a surprising amount of versatility, actually. You do have a few control spells and counter spells. Beast Within is one of my favorite green cards, which I guess means I'm also a little bit blue, but my favorite shard is Bant. So I can, I can be a little bit blue, can't I? Um, I? I'm not a big fan of Tarmogoyf, but I'm a fan of Tarmogoyf lookalikes, like Scavenging Ooze and Quirion, Dryad, not Ranger, that's, that's important. And my favorite card of all, you can probably guess what that is, the one and only T1 Glistener Elf, best card in Magic. And if you don't like it, eh, that's okay. Um, my favorite Magic card, obviously <laughs> I'm not reading it as I go, uh, Glistener Elf, but if I had to say a second one, if I had to say a second, also Glistener. Glistener Elf is one through four. And then Enlightened Tutor actually is one of my favorites. Uh, I like being able to play, even though I know the card is disadvantage, you're playing a card and not getting one until your next turn, um, basically giving up your draw. Even though I know that, there is a reason why Mystical Tutor and Vampiric Tutor are banned. And Enlightened Tutor gets so many things. I like playing decks that have one of answers for whatever you need, or they can assemble combos that are just one piece in each, or however many. Uh, Eva, a deck that I made for Legacy, which is Death and Taxes with Enlightened Tutor, stands for Enlightened Value Added, 
and it's named after my daughter, Evangeline, Eva. Uh, I actually play that in Legacy now. Over Bug Infect, which is near and dear to my heart, I was playing that deck before Tom Ross played Infect in Legacy. I, I'm pretty sure, actually. Certainly before he was known for it. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure I was playing it before, in, 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 in Legacy, before he was. I'll have to ask him about that sometime. That's another thing. Tom Ross actually looked at my deck. When he beat Ruben Bressler at an SCG Atlanta, it wasn't a featured match, it was off camera, I'm afraid. But when he beat Ruben Bressler on a Blood Moon deck, I want to say Imperial Painter, you know, the Painter Grindstone combo deck, after that match, I told him I was playing Infect, and he looked at my deck and he critiqued it. Oh my goodness. I could just die, right there. Right there. That was great. Um, he said that he didn't like that I didn't have card draw other than Gitaxian Probe. I didn't have counter spells. Instead, I had more pump spells. I had Mighty Will, Crowset, and Groundswell. And I also had Creature Kill. I had Snuff Out and Abrupt Decay. And I could pay the black for Surgical Extraction. So, that was my build. He can certainly feel free to disagree. And he's right. He's actually right. Um, I'm switching nowadays over to Simic Infect, except that I don't have any Force of Will. So in the meantime, I'm playing Death and Taxes. Uh, excuse me, I'm playing Eva. Um, favorite format? Legacy. Absolutely. I, okay, I pretty much love every format, but Legacy is my favorite. I like the depth and diversity, that combination of the two of them, and just sheer power that comes from playing Legacy. Uh, it's not cube, it's not vintage. Uh, power cubes do have more power, and I love playing those for novelty's sake. But I love being able to play just all kinds of decks all across Magic's history, and there'd be a little bit more diversity than there is in vintage, a little more balance. Um, I think that's safe to say. Uh, my favorite, my first Magic deck, Mono Black Aggro. I, so when I got started playing Magic, I didn't know what formats were and neither did my friends. You know where this is going. So I basically bought a Legacy deck. <laughs> and everyone else is running standard decks. Not everyone else, but it, it seemed like it. Looking back at it, Oh, actually, you were running a block deck, and you, all your cards are from the same set. And here I am running around with, uh, trying to kill people with, uh, I believe it's Sanguine Guard, and Black Knight, and, um, I, eventually, Profane Command, and, uh, Consumed Spirit, I believe, made huge off of Cabal Coffers, and an Orborg was in there. I was playing some silly shenanigans back then. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if I hadn't learned what formats were. Uh, that was fun. Actually, the first time that I ever lost, not lost a game or a match, but lost the first time I ever played against someone. Uh, so I, I, because I didn't get the chance to actually um, play against other people right off the bat, because my parents thought everything was satanic, I delved into the game, I learned the game, before I actually got the cards, and so when I actually bought my own deck, it was, I don't want to say it was hard for me to be beaten, but on the first time, and then people learned what I was doing, and then, you know, uh, but the first time I was ever beaten in what I'll call a pilot match, with a deck that I built, was a guy playing mono blue, mono blue mill, and I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know what this ancestral recall was that he brought to high school, just in the cafeteria. Just an ancestral recall. I didn't know that card was unfair. And now, and now that looks silly. But then again, I'm also playing, I'm pretty sure I had a banned card in there somewhere. Well, I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe. It certainly wasn't the most casual deck in the whole world. Um, where does my love for Infect come? When I got to the University of Georgia, I did not have any magic decks that I was terribly fond of. I had my, my mono black, but maybe enough Gatekeeper of Malakir and Vampire Nighthawk and Sanguine Guard. 
Hypnotic Spectre was in there too, actually. I remember that. Um, maybe enough of that. I, I became disenchanted. So I went to go and find another deck. And lo and behold, I saw someone put up an infect list. Uh, this was somewhere on TCG Player's magic section. You can do a deck search. And mine was a standard deck. I remember because it was uh, Scars of Mirrodin through Innistrad and Wild Defiance was in the list. So I, I built a standard Infect deck. And so our game store had extended. So then I built an extended deck. And this was when the Fetchlands, the Zindi Fetches, I bought my Misty Rainforest for, I want to say it was like 20. It was 20 to, I want to, maybe it was 22. I think I'm seeing 2 2 in my head. Not terribly expensive relative to what they are now. And at the time, I had a job, but I didn't have bills, so I could go spend money on whatever I wanted. And so I ended up getting, uh, <laughs> started out with the cheap stuff, and in fact, and then made it sim Simic, and then made it Bug, and then I see Ari Lax is playing it in Modern. He has a, a deck tech that he's doing for the Pro Tour, I think it was Return to Ravnica, and, oh yeah, this is a thing! I can play this in Modern. So then I played it in Modern. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, I, I can play this in Legacy, can't I? And so I started playing it in Legacy. And just, yeah. I, it's so fun to be able to kill someone on turn two with a Glistener Elf. And I know that makes me a bad person, and I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, who is my commander? Uh, my commander, when I play my own deck, uh, I'd have to rebuild it. I don't have a commander deck right now, but I'd have to say, oh yeah, hair, hair. I'd have to say it's Dami, a Sage of Stone. It's a bug commander. I can play Infect with that, and I like being able to, when the late game comes around, to just keep drawing into more gas to try to finish people off. Uh, she herself doesn't have Infect. I could go Mimeoplasm for something like that. I actually don't have Mimeoplasm, but I think I would try the Mimeoplasm, the is in the name, uh, out if I had one. Absolutely would. Uh, my tiny leader is Azuri Renegade leader. Again, I could go Glissa, or I could do the imaginary bug and uh, be able to play Infect, but I do Azuri because I have a lot of elf pieces and I can just play legacy elves, singleton legacy elves on people and go crazy like that. Um, that's always fun. It absolutely is. Um, Timmy, Johnny, or Spike? Personally, I count myself as a Johnny. A Johnny. Not a Johnny. He's cool, though. Uh, I like, I love, actually, the concept of deck building as a form of expression and just the search for broken combos and new synergies. That is what appeals most to me as a Magic player, and a player in general, actually, of, of card games and whatnot. Uh, being able to build something new. I, I look up to Sam Black, for, in, for instance. He may be my favorite pro, um, at least in that sense. Um, I, I, I can see a, when I get into a competitive event, uh, when I go to a Star City Games event, or when I'm in a Grand Prix, I may turn into a little bit of a spike, but I try not to be an asshole spike. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Aaron. <laughs> Sorry, little bro, if you if you watch this, sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I try not to be a bad guy, let's say. Or I try not to be rude, or jerk, so on and so forth. You, you get the point now, little bro. Um, and there is always the, the fun that comes with being able to just play giant spells, being a Timmy. But I think my favorite part is being a Johnny. Um, my favorite Planeswalker. Oh, um... So if I'm, as far as, like, the character himself, it's Soren Markov. I just, he's a, he's a vampire. Okay, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, I like that he's, he starts out seeming like he's detached, he's bad, he's, he's mono black after all when he starts. No, he's, he's actually a balance between good and evil. He creates Avacyn because he respects balance that much. And then you find out about his backstory a little more. He was human, turned into a vampire by his dad. It, it's kind of tragic. I, and he's not, I don't want to say over the top. Like when I, when I see Jace, I see someone they're just kind of pushing, or at least they had been pushing Monus. Maybe they still are. 
Ralzarek, kind of the same way. Soren is just, you know, he's content after the mending to just, yeah, I'm immortal anyway. I don't care that I'm not as powerful as I was. And it's all good. Meanwhile, Nicobolus is trying to take over the power of the Conflux, and Liliana is making packs with demons to get more power. And Soren's just, eh, I'm all ready. Well, what are you going to do? I'm awesome. Uh, as far as actual cosplay, I want to do a Gideon Jira cosplay. Look at this! Look at this hair! I'm gonna do a jump rope with this one day. Um, I don't think he actually does... He definitely doesn't do a full beard, but that's easy to shave. You know, if he has any hair that's left, I'll just leave that. Um, you know, I, I'm athletic. I may not be Hulk, but I'm athletic. I can, I can do something like that. Um, you know. Giddy and Jura just seem kind of awesome. And walk around with a bunch of armor all day. Uh, take that to convention. Just walk around for like five hours straight with armor on. It's awesome. and, and whatever the... I don't actually know the name of his hand sword whip things. Hand sword whip things. Seems kind of impractical, but I guess magic, right? But the way he does it, it seems kind of impractical. Or, hey, I'm Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine with, like, ED on his whips or something. Uh, sorry, Aaron! Actually, you may not know who that is. Who's my favorite card artist? Rebecca Gay. G-U-A-Y. It's pronounced gay. No question. None whatsoever. Absolutely love her art. Um, favorite card art? Anything by Rebecca Gay. Uh, but especially, oh, good grief. Did I put anything down there? Shite. Um, no, that's close. I self-censored. Gaia's Blessing? Yeah, Gaia's Blessing. I'm, I'm going to say that one. I'm positive that's Rebecca, and it's just, I don't know what I find so appealing about it. Romance. Yeah, I can imagine myself being the knight up in front and getting hugged from behind. That seems kind of cool. Uh, there's actually a, a very similar card art in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I don't remember the name of it. Maybe we'll put an overlay over here to fill up the dead space for a little bit. Uh, it's, a, it's very similar. It's a guy, it looks like he's sitting on a bench, looking over to one side, and then he's getting hugged by an angel too. So something about that concept appeals to me. Uh, Favorite pro player? Ah, I did, I did see that. So, Sam Black, Tom Ross, because he talked to me, and that's awesome. He gets a tiebreaker with players like Reed Duke and Feline Longmore, uh, because he plays Infect already. But they've, they've spoken to me as well, and they were awesome as well. Feline spoke to me on Twitter, that is true. And that was kind of cool, talked to her about Vintage Solidarity, which I'm trying to make a thing. It's, it's cheap by vintage standards. You only need one piece of power. You only actually want one piece of power. I'm going to hurry this up before the battery dies. I may have to actually just... Alright, much better. Much, much better. I think. Mm -hmm. um, favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card? Blade Knight. It's... A lot of it has to do with sentimentality. When I got started playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I played a Warrior Toolbox deck, uh, Reinforcements of the Army, Blade Knight was my go-to card. Uh, I know that way back when, Blue Eyes was the big one, if you, you had to be able to get by Blue Eyes. But Blade Knight, I loved the strategy of, I will play a Blade Knight, set everything in my back row, it's a 2,000 point attacker now, and flip monsters, I hated them. Man Eater Bug, I hated. Oh, I hated that card. Um, and then Blade Knight just said no. Obviously, it's a lot less powerful now because it's not an explosive card. But I love the idea of playing a tempo deck that says, "Hey, look, here's Blade Knight. I will just play this Blade. Knight. It's it's basically like Delver in Magic. I will play this Delver and then play everything else I can to protect the Delver so that I can just keep killing you. Or seven turns later, you're dead." Uh, Blade Knight's kind of supposed to be doing the same thing. I will play this Blade Knight, and then everything else I do is going to be to protect that Blade Knight. And then there's other cards that do similar things. I like Trap Tricks, Mermelio, 
which is just a tempo car that gets its own protection, especially if you're on the play. I like Guardian Edos because it's bigger, special summon, you get something else from your hand, you know, get the Blade Knight and the Guardian Edos. Uh, something like that. <laughs> get the Romelia and the Guardian Edos. What a, what a game, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I love Magic, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, do I play GOATS format? Yes. Yes, I do. And I play a Blade Knight Warrior Toolbox Tempo GOATS variant. That's a, it's a lot. It's, it's the standard GOATS, except Magician of Faith can also go and get reinforcements of the army too, and I'm going to try to beat you down with Blade Knight. And the beauty of Blade Knight, I, one of the beauties in that format particularly, is that if Thousand Eyes takes the Blade Knight and equips it, it's only 1,600 points, not 2,000. So if you have another Blade Knight, you and Thousand Eyes can just stare at each other because neither of you can get by one another until someone, like if I get an Exiled Force, something like that. Um, let's see, or, or just kill it. Uh, what's your favorite, or your first Yu-Gi-Oh deck? I think I said that already. Warrior, Warrior Toolbox Tempo. Favorite deck? Well, this goes into a lot of different decks. Uh, there's a lot of formats, and I play Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. So, uh, we're gonna say Bug Infect in Modern, Eva in Legacy, I think now it's Eva, Solidarity in Vintage, uh, I like playing Mono Green Infect in Popper, uh, I play Obelisk Speed Summon, or what I call Mr. Obelisk Neighborhood, in Yu-Gi-Oh, in Advanced Yu-Gi-Oh. And the aforementioned um, Blade Knight Warrior Toolbox Tempo variant of GOATS in GOATS format. Did I miss anything? Um, no. Uh, I played Mono Green Infected in Block, in like, Bring Your Own Block. And I Force Blue in every draft I did now. Uh, every cube draft now. Maybe not. Um, why do we? Oh, here, here's a good one. This one was actually asked. This isn't isn't one I made up. Why do we see you playing every format except standard? The reason is because I don't have a standard deck. Actually, it's really that simple. I was not excited about Theros, like at all, to be honest. And now that Cons is in, I don't have any Theros cards, and that leaves out so much of the pool that I really just can't make a standard deck. And plus, there's the usual like it's not a very good investment. By all means, if you want to, I, there are some great things about Standard. I do actually very much like that you can say, uh, you can every three months you get a new chance at seeing what's good in the meta, a new chance at building your own deck, whereas something like Modern and Legacy, it's just the pool is there, and you get little additions to it every now and then, but it's the same pool the whole time, whereas it changes so much in Standard. That's fascinating. That's awesome. It's also kind of expensive if you keep doing it over and over again, so I can't do that. Uh, although I do play Standard Online on a Cockatrice, actually, an MTG workstation. Um, so that, there's that. Uh, favorite deck that I invented, Delve Pod in Modern. That deck was cool. Birthing Pod is banned, so I can't do it anymore. You can see some videos. If you just go in and type Modern Delve Pod, it should be the first, like, four videos that come up. Uh, that deck, <laughs> I, it wasn't actually the only pod variant that I made up, but it's the only one I was able to get the pieces for in time before it got banned. Uh, so the, the concept behind that deck was actually kind of simple. You play mono-black control, just attacking their hand, attacking their creatures with cards like Geth's Verdict and Small Pox and and so I'm sure there's some kills and some other kills, but like go for the throat, I'm sure is in there. Uh, you just keep attacking their creatures and their hand, whatever, control the board, uh, until you have enough cards in your graveyard that you can delve into a Tombstalker or Shambling Attendance. And there's a very, I've changed the deck now, but it doesn't matter because it's banned. But into a Tombstalker or a Shambling Attendant. Now what do those cards have in common? They're eight drops. If you Birthing Pod them, you get a 9-drop. Iona is a 9-drop. Blazing Archon is a 9-drop. The definitely less than awesome uh, Inkwell Leviathan. I was underwhelmed by that in every match except Merfolk, and even then it didn't help all that much. Uh, 
but hey, that's there, that's a card. The variant that I came up with afterwards is you replace uh, Shambling Attendants with Gurmog Angler, I think is what it's called. It's a 7-drop, which you pot into G-Daddy, Gristlebrand. And you replace Inkwell Leviathan, because that card is yeah. And ideally, uh, so there is green in the deck. I have Overgrown Tomb, just to be able to pay the mana instead of life for Birthing Pod when I need it. Uh, Tassiger can also use that. Tassiger can go in the deck, by all means, if you'd like. He's a 6-drop, so he doesn't pot into anything that I'm crazy about. But he's a great Delve creature, obviously. Uh, and then there's one uh, Godless Shrine in there for Unburial Rites. Because there's Unburial Rites because if you get Iona stuck in your graveyard, you can't play her unless you have Unburial Rites. So that's in there. Same thing with Blazing Archon. G-Daddy, you're fine. Uh, actually, no, you're not. I, I meant to say hand. If they're not in your graveyard, if they're in your hand. If Iona's in your hand, or Archon's in your hand, you can't do it. So, did, attack yourself with a hand attack or small pox into your yard, and then reanimate them. That was a lot. I apologize, that was kind of long. Longer than I wanted. And then, um, Eva in Legacy. It's typical death and taxes, except you're replacing quite a number of slots, actually, with four Enlightened Tutor, and then a bunch of one-of artifacts and enchantments, including the Rest Helm combo, Rest in Peace, Helm of Obedience, that's in there. So you can just go and combo kill the opponent. If you have one piece and Enlightened Tutor, by all means, go for it. Uh, let's see. Uh, itchy nose, itchy. I apologize. <laughs> uh, worst deck I ever made. Um... Orzhov Ramp. It was a modern deck that just did not work. Uh, honorary mention goes to my Mono Red Blood Moon that tried to race out a Blood Moon on turn one, because matchups for that really, I think, are a lot of what got me when I played the deck. I played it two weeks, and I think of those, I won one of nine matches. That's bad. And Orzhov Ramp, I think, did as poorly. It may have been one of eight instead, but it was... it was... Not cool at all. Um, at least with the mono with a mono red blood moon, if you race out the turn one or turn two blood moon, you can just win right there. You just you don't have to play any more magic basically. Uh, but with something like Orzhov Ramp, what I was trying to do is resolve into Arcana Revenant or a Crypt Ghast and ramp into Grizzlebrand or a good Profane Command or Debt to the Deathless, and that's just I cannot tell you how fragile that is actually. Um, just a bolt, a flame slash, and you're done. Well, Nirkana Revenant needs the flame slash, but then you're done. Um, and that happened all the time. Those are expensive cards. Cryptgast, the cheaper one, is a four drop, and Nirkana Revenant's a six. So I had a hard time, uh, ever actually getting to my end game like that. And I'm not playing any counter spells, of course. So, uh, just the deck did not work as I wanted it to. It had a, a few good control spells, but it, you just auto lost to bo to Bogles, Boggles, Hexoras, Hexoras. You played, you lost to Hexproof, and you didn't do so great against any aggro matches that went wide, especially tokens. Okay, maybe control, maybe you'll near never out racing comp. It just it had bad matchups all around. Um, and so I, that was that was that deck, and it's no more as a result. Um, that was probably the worst deck I've ever made, that I invented. Um, how do I come up with new decks? Gyromancy! Uh, no, Silent Hill references aside, actually just a number of ways. If I see a new card, and I just, I really just want to break that card, that was, that was pathetic. There we go. Don't worry, it's just a smoke teller. Like, it's smoke teller, no one cares. In fact, let's just, ah, there's, no one likes you. Um, but if I see a card and I want to just break it, I kind of get a little obsessed about it. And so I'll be going gatherer just for hours and hours trying to find ways to do that. Just look up 
combos on the internet, see if I can just find, just type the name of the card, then the format, and see what comes up. Uh, that's one way. That's the, the typical way, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, and then spend more time on Gatherer, and more time on Gatherer. The other way, much less frequently, is that I'll come up with a deck name, and then I'll go from there. I have to come up with a deck that revolves around the name. So the Blood Moon deck that I just made uh, was based off of Three Wolf Moon. I had to come up with a deck based on the name Three Wolf Moon. And so it's a Blood Moon Werewolf deck. Ah, it works! Or I had a Popper deck that I called Dark Souls, which is my favorite. I'm pretty sure that's a question I put on there. I'm going to skip it then. My favorite video game is Dark Souls. Hands down. It's actually Dark Souls 1. The flawed masterpiece, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so I wanted to build a deck called Dark Souls, and it was just a bunch of little common creatures, of course it's Popper, little creatures, they're all black, it's a mono-black deck, that have evasion or regeneration, and you just throw a bunch of enchantments on them. It's kind of like Boggles, except screw Hexproof. Instead of Hexproof, you're getting either regen or you're getting some sort of evasion from it, which means you're much more vulnerable to the lightning bolt, uh, and that could just kill you right off. But I like the concept of the deck, and it actually seems pretty fast, uh, if you don't get disrupted by the opponent's removal in the early game, which you will. But I like... well, okay. If you're playing something like Esper Familiars, you'll win. But I like the concept for the deck. Uh, so something like that. I've actually been on a little bit of a tangent trying to come up a, come up with a deck that goes by the name Snow Patrol in any format. I don't know. I'm trying. I really am. I want to come up with a Snow Patrol deck because I have snow-covered lands and I want them to go to good use somewhere. Find a good home. Uh, and it can't just be... I, I did have an idea. It's a mono-white deck. But I can't fit any, anything that needs the Snowlands in it. Uh, yes, there are plenty of Snowlands, but what do they go into? There's So far, everything just could use a regular land instead. Why not use your Full Arts Indies? Mm, I'm trying to work. I'm working on it. I really am. Alright. Um, let's see. Before you get on to Scrying Sheets and Mouth of Ronim, I've thought of those. Uh, they don't work with my idea. At least not as it is right now. Uh, moving on, where where actually am I? Um, do I have any misprints? Actually, yeah. Uh, give me just one quick moment. I have my trade binder right here. Um, so he, I don't actually have many misprints, uh, and actually, I'm pretty sure this isn't all of them. At least one more is in a deck somewhere. But here's my first one. See if you can catch what's wrong with this. One of these things is not like the others. Yeah, a uh, tiny border on top, huge border on bottom. You can actually even see the little white dots that indicate that it's uh, not been cut correctly. So that's one. Uh, here is a goblin shrine. Oh, God, what is that? <laughs> yeah, you, you see it, I'm sure. Uh, as long, the word long, yeah, that's an island over it, I guess. And then the rest of these, I'm not sure if they're misprints. I think so. Uh, so, for example, this Gaia's touch looks like the text is so misaligned. See, Gaia's is already, it's creeping into the black border on the side. And the text in the text box is uh, creeping onto the border. Or maybe just a little bit over it. It's, uh, it, I, I'm pretty sure that that's a misprint, but I would not swear by it. Uh, I have to get someone else to verify that for me. Now, even now, this kind of doesn't look like a misprint to me. It's in crust. You notice at the top corner there's this, looks like a smudge. Well, the smudge doesn't come off. I'm not using water on this. And when I, uh, when I do this, I can't see anything on it that's raising it. It doesn't look like there's anything to scratch off. It just looks like a color error. Um, and it just basically it looks like someone took the ink while it was drying and just did it like that. Uh, and then this one is almost certainly not a misprint, but 
It, it might be. I, I can hope. This is a bloody rush of blood. Uh, it's actually just that the colors are so much bolder on this one. Um, it's That's all. I wish I had my regular rush of blood so that I could compare it for you so you could see. This is actually very, very bold. But because it's rush of blood, it, it's, it fits that it's so sanguine. I like it. Uh, I hang on to it. Okay, so now that that's over and done with, uh, what do I like least in Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, in that order, what do I like least about Magic? The reserve list, actually, is the thing that I like the least. Now, uh, you've seen me play Legacy. You've seen that I have Tropical Islands. I have four near-mint Tropical Islands. I have four near-mint Bayous. I have... Uh, I think it's one taiga and two plateaus. I may have that backwards. And they're near mint. And a Gaia's Cradle in near mint condition that I got before the legend rule changed, and so it jumped so much. And I will still say, I hate the reserve list. I am not a collector. I'm a player, first and foremost. And I mean, it's okay if you want to if you want to go and invest in these things. Uh, I would much rather you invest in stocks, actually, because I want to be able to play against people, uh, actually, in competitive events where the card selection that they have can better match their skill. Uh, if you want to go and play proxies against me, by all means. In fact, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't care. If I'll bring my actual cards and you bring your proxies, your 75 proxy deck. I don't care. I, I will... Uh, I appreciate that you're actually playing Legacy or Vintage or even Modern if you have to... Well, that's not a reserve list issue. That's... that's just... money. <laughs> but it, it feels like some of those cards are reserved. It feels like it. Uh, I don't mind at all. Go for it. Um, the better to have better competition, um, and for you to grow more as a player. Uh, and the thing that I like least about Yu-Gi-Oh! is that it's not built for multiplayer. It, the game is only built with the assumption that you're playing one player against another, and so that's not even really an option. Yes, there are, are ways you can work around that. Uh, some friends and I have played some variants where we made it um, into a multiplayer game, but it's not anything that's officially sanctioned. And a lot of the card's rulings then become kind of hard to make out if you're doing it that way. Uh, the most classic example I can think of is Upstart Goblin. I'll draw a card, opponent gains a thousand life. Well, is that target opponent or is that all opponents? I mean, because it's built for one-on-one, -on -one, it's basically just whatever you and your playgroup are okay with. Um, and Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! Both! I love both games! I I like... I don't want to say that I like the color pie, because I don't, but I like that... Uh, I like that it puts you into... Or, no, no, let me, let me rephrase, let me be more nuanced about it. I like that the color pie exists, and that it makes players have to go into different colors for different types of effects, I don't like it being terribly strictly enforced. Uh, so when we go back to Legacy, that's another thing I like about Legacy. You can you get some color shifted stuff from way back in the day because the colors weren't all set out um, very well. My kill spells in Legacy can be white, for instance. I, I can do Swords to Plowshares instead of something expensive like Go for the Throat or Wretched Banquet isn't, isn't exactly uh, Swords to Plowshares. I can, I can do stuff like that because the color pie isn't super strictly enforced back then, because it was still being developed. Scars of Mirrodin, specifically New Phyrexia, I love that set, because that is perfect by me. It gives you colors, and then it says you're rewarded for playing that color, but you don't have to. You can get that, that effect without having to play that color at all. You can play a mono blue deck with Dismember. That's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, go for it. Do whatever you want. Yeah. I like that so very much. You want to play a burn deck with, oh, yeah, let me get this card back on top of my library so I can draw it again and kill you. Never mind, never mind. Um, 
I, but I do like that the color pie exists and can force players into those kinds of decisions when you're doing deck building. I don't like... Uh, no, 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 no. There's no don't like. I already went over don't like. There's, that's enough of that. That's enough negativity. Um, I do like that it has a resource system, too. And this is an apples and oranges thing between Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, the resource system in Yu-Gi-Oh is virtual. It's, it's just your one normal summon a turn. That's basically the only resource you have in the game, other than just inherent resources like the number of cards in your hand. In Magic, you have mana, and that slows the game down and gives it a new element of depth. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, it changes the way that you play the game entirely. It changes the way that you deck build. It's the reason why, in Magic, if you want to pay one mana and draw a card, you're going to get something else with it. You're going to get some selection, like Brainstorm, Ponder, and Preordain, or you're going to get uh, information, like Gitaxian Probe and Peak. Uh, whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's the other way around. If you want to draw a card, you're giving something up. I'm going to give my opponent a thousand life in order for me to draw this card. Or if I want to draw two cards off Cup of Ace, I have to flip a coin. I might give my opponent two cards instead. Something like that. Um, I think that's I think that difference actually makes the games I don't always want to have the same food. I want to change it up every now and then. Same same with these games. And more presumably when I get into more of them. Uh, what's the best I've ever performed in any event at Grand Prix DC? It's a legacy event. I went to day 2. I ended the event 10-5. And I played against, uh, I think the most prestigious player that I, against whom I played might have been Greg Ogrink, at least of the ones that I recognized as being semi-pros. Uh, and I didn't play anyone super awesome. I didn't play like a, a Tom Ross or a Reed Duke or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, but I, I did play someone who I recognized and found on Twitter. Okay, that works. Playing Rug Delver versus Bug Infect. This was with Bug Infect, by the way. Bug Infect made it to day two. Yes. Um, makes me proud. Deck I made. Makes me proud. Who else was running Bug Infect at the time? Mono Green, Simic, but Bug Infect and Legacy. I, I had never seen it. Um, let's see. What's next? Oh, and that was without any buys, actually, while I'm thinking about it. I, I started the event with zero buys. And my partners and I, I, I went there with a couple friends, we all won our first two matches. And I think, I know that I won my first three, and I think one of the others also won his first three. So we had a, we had a strong play group going in. The three of us, we, did, we were hot. Um, I was the only one that made day two, but none of us came in with any buys, so we were just proud of that, uh, doing as well as we did. Uh, when did I start playing? I've already answered that. That was uh, Lorwyn when I started playing. Is that question repeated? Is that just, when did I start playing Magic? When did I start playing? I think that's supposed to be about Yu-Gi-Oh. When did I start playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, that was back in high school. That was months before I started Magic, actually. Do I play any other trading card games? Unfortunately, no, I don't. It's been... <sighs> it's been so long since I played uh, Pokemon, but I used to play Pokemon. And I used to play the Naruto trading card game. I also liked that because it had a different resource system, and the strategy in that game was different. The deck building was fundamentally different uh, because you could use basically any card as a resource. Well, I, not to get into the minutia of it, but uh, any card that you had in your hand basically could be turned into a resource for the fueling of other of other cards, and that that changed the game. Uh, I like that. Uh, but the game is not being printed anymore, and it's kind of fading away anyway. Uh, I think it kind of got stale near the end. I didn't play it until the end, but I think the meta was getting rather stale, and it wasn't selling as well as it could have. Um, let's see. What about that game I'm designing? Um, that's, that's a question one of you asked me. Uh, so back in the 100 sub special, I said that I was working on a game and there'd be like a Kickstarter and everything like that and uh, it's supposed to, the proceeds are going to go to charity and all of that and then you just didn't hear about it. 
and didn't hear about it and didn't hear about it. Well, now, you, now you're going to hear about it. And that is, this is my last semester at university, and I have a baby now, and a number of jobs. So when I get less busy, then I can focus on that. But for right now, um, I'm just trying to keep my head above water with school and work and, and home. So I apologize. I am actually, I am still working on it. I think that I have most of the rules down with a couple big exceptions. One of which is how I'm going to make players take turns at the same time and make that work. Uh, I honestly don't know the answer to that just yet. I think I do, but I don't know. And so I'm going to be playtesting with that and going over uh, ga theories of gaming with friends of mine, make, seeing how they work. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, I'll get right back to it. I promise I will get right back to it when summer starts. Uh, that's when I'm really kicking it into high gear, and that's the first project out of the gate. And you hold me to it. You make sure that I do it, too. Um, that's especially, especially you, honey. You make sure I remember. Uh, let's see, when did I start the channel? Why did I start the channel? Um, well, originally, I think it was, I think it was a couple of things. I, I was showing off a deck. I built Bug Infect for Legacy, and I, my first video, my first however many videos, were all Bug Infect. And really, the channel started out as, I, I think I called the playlist, the life of an underplayed Legacy deck. Which sounds so humble, but, um, I'd never seen anyone else play the deck, and I wanted other people to play the deck. And so I wanted to show it off, and so Bug Infect, I was trying to give it its day in the sun, and uh, that's that's how it got started. You you can see, I want to say it was back in 2013, is when I, like September-ish or August, I don't know, it was way back, just borrowing a camera, borrowing equipment from the University of Georgia, and then using that to make my first video, and because I had to borrow the equipment, the time in between videos was really long. And then I got my own, and ta-da! Uh, I can upload much more frequently. Uh, it's not that I'll, as, as you know, I don't do uh, one. I don't do one every single day, but it's an average of about one a day. Uh, I'll, I'll have a cluster of like three or four coming up in the same day. Uh, that's just that's just me working around my schedule. Actually, I apologize for that. Um, Let's see, and also education. A lot of that was for myself. I wanted to see my own misplays. You know, the, we, we all hear, I say we all, uh, the story of Reed Duke after he got crushed at Worlds in, I want to say 2012, uh, he came out of it in last, and Owen Turtenwald, you know, Reed Duke is there writing down all his mistakes. That is what I wanted to do. Absolutely. And I realized that for a single event, that's that's easy. Uh, that's easier to do over a long time, especially when you're. Oh my goodness! See these? These are tattoos at this point. I am tired. I, I'm not always playing at my peak, um, and I know I don't want to use that as an excuse. It's it's like when people say that they they blame luck all the time when they're playing Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh. If you if that's all you ever do, you're probably not going to get better as a player. I don't want to do that. But at the same time, I understand that, uh, but, but for those games, <laughs> I, I understand it's not always under my control, but for those games where I know that I can, or, no, no, that, how do I put this? Uh, maybe I've already put it well enough. Uh, for those games where I think that I was playing well enough, or playing cognizantly enough, that if I make a mistake, it's not because I'm tired and, oh, just, I forgot to tap my lands correctly. It's... I wasn't thinking theoretically well enough. For those games, this is made to help me. And to help you as well, yes, but originally it was to help me. Um, why is there never a subscriber button in the videos? Or, or a, a like, comment, subscribe, or, or the annotations you see at the beginning, or at the end of videos, or the intro thing at, at the beginning of videos where it's like, insert guitar riff, and then show title, and stuff like that. Um, why isn't there any of that? 
it's because the channel was supposed to just be, and it is just supposed to be, with exceptions like videos like these, the subspecials mostly, uh, just pure expressions of gaming. The game itself, nothing more, that's it. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get at when I do this. Uh, just me brewing or watching people play matches or deck techs, uh, but not all the, the fluff that goes around it. And so maybe I'd have more subscribers, maybe I'd have hit it sooner if I, if I gave the shoutouts and put a subscriber button somewhere around here, but I'm, I'm perfectly content with not with not doing that, with just showing you the game. Uh, what do I do for a living? Oh god, um... <laughs> okay, so, we, I've already established that I'm a student at the University of Georgia, and I am working at a Amazon, at an Amazon storefront store called Card Advantage, and they just they sell trading cards, they sell magic cards on Amazon and they have their own website you can buy from them directly, buy from us directly. And that's a pretty, that's obviously a job that's right up my alley. I, I very much like that job. Favorite job that I've ever had, uh, unless we, we count you guys, <laughs> unless we count the channel as a job, in which case that's my favorite, absolutely. And if I could, if I could make enough off of this, and I really don't right now, trust me, uh, but if I could, I would do this as a full-time job. I would love to. That's kind of the dream of every YouTuber that doesn't want to just like get rich and famous, but wants to do what they love. Just to, even if I just made enough to make a living off of it, that would be, that. that's it. That's all I want. That's all I need. I can, the rest can go to charity. I really don't care. But to be able to just make these videos for you would be Awesome. Um, but anyway, that's not even all. Um, I also have a radio show that comes on Friday night, Saturday morning, midnight to three. It's a three-hour radio show called Parties and Parodies, where we do Dungeons and Dragons radio drama. Uh, so that's that's fun. That's a. Uh, it's been going on. We're in our eighth season. So and we do seasons as semesters. So our eighth semester on the air. Uh, <laughs> Which is just mind-boggling to think that we've even been on for that long. That's just... That's crazy. I, I don't know how many people listen to our show because we're a, a non-profit, non-commercial radio station, so we, we don't do any tracking. So I honestly don't know if anybody listens, or if everybody... No, not everybody. But I, I don't know. I just love actually doing it. I don't get anything for it, of course. N none of us that work at the radio station get paid. It's all students, all volunteer. Uh, so if you don't want to count that as for a living, by all means. And then, of course, I'm a dad. So you've, you've seen the little baby. I'll go and get her in a little bit. Um, let's see. So what am I studying in school? Also, oh god. Um, my majors are sociology and political science. My minors are anthropology and geography. And in case you're wondering how long all of that is taking me, I am in my sixth year. Uh, not because I'm, like, failing or anything, I'm just taking way too much stuff. <laughs> taking way too many classes. Because I want to major in the universe, and there's only so much time and money. And I'm, I'm graduating this semester. I'm, I'm cutting myself off. This is it. This is the last one. Um, what comes after school for me? You. Uh, <laughs> YouTube. I'm going to continue doing that. Other than that, it depends on where I go. I have been accepted into grad school. I'm not going to say where. Uh, I guess I could. I don't, I'm trying to decide if that counts as bragging or not. Um, just in case it does, I'll, I'll leave. I'll just leave that as a surprise for you. No, I know. Okay, fine, because it, it actually would be a pretty serious issue for the channel if I did. Actually, so I'll, I'll say, I got accepted to McGill University, which is in Montreal, which is in Quebec, which is in Canada. And so that might change a thing or two about the, about the channel, actually. Um, you may see a lot more French con you may see French content, not a lot more, you may see French content. Um, 
I will of course change uh, local game stores. I'll be recording somewhere up there. Hopefully there will be a place that allows me to. Like Dragon Star Hobbies has been really cool. They don't pay me at all. They pay me in letting me stay and record games. And they are awesome dudes and all that. It's, it's hard to find something like that. Uh, there wasn't anything close to that LGS, close to my home store in Athens before they came in. Uh, and there wasn't anything like that back home for me before I got to university. Uh, so I imagine it's not the world's most common thing to find a cool game store with some cool owners that just let you come in and, and record and will even sometimes like have the table set out for you with the mat and everything out. It's awesome like that. Um, but I'm not sure what all will change by becoming a Canadian channel other than maybe like who sees the games might change. Maybe? I don't know. Um, and then other than grad school, uh, we'll see if I stay here, if I stay here, and I might, I might take a little bit of time off before I go to grad school, uh, just to make sure that I can see the baby grow up a little bit. I, I've missed that a lot this semester. Um, I may be staying here, stay and work at a card advantage, work, uh, maybe find some odd jobs around. I mean, I could do 40 hours a week, and then maybe something else, and then YouTube. <laughs> Replace school with more work. Actually, that's not the best way to get more more productivity for the channel out. Um, but I've got to eat. <laughs> got to get clothes for her and diapers. Diapers are so expensive, but you know that. Um, favorite food and drink? Oh, gah. Um, actually, I did get this one set out. Give me just a quick moment. I know that you don't have smell-o-vision. We unfortunately haven't invented that yet, have we? I mean, there's supposed to be some, like, eye smell-o-vision, I think. But this handy-dandy little... This is like lava. This is uh, actually not the hottest thing in the world, but my mouth is watering, just smelling it. It is... Have you ever heard of a restaurant called Zaxby's? Uh, they have their hottest hot sauce is my personal favorite it's not the hottest in the whole world by any stretch of the imagination but it is i'm probably gonna have to do this over a sink or something uh yes i am about to take a shot of it uh it is very flavorful and it is very hot it's not going to work oh it's working aha well okay Oops. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Okay. Bonus fact about me. My favorite Ninja Turtle? Leonardo. was awesome like that. Uh, I'm actually going to go and get something to drink first. And I'm going to try to not do any cuts after this. The reason I'm getting something to drink first is I can feel that my throat is kind of sore. But if I get something to drink after I start taking the shot, you're going to think I'm weak and that I can't handle it. So I'm going to go get something to drink now. Still had some of the tea residue. That was tasty. Screw it. Bottoms up. This may take a while. I was expecting just to be able to go, no, it doesn't work that way. Get in my belly! Okay, there's a little left.
It's like in the hot sauce challenges, it make you lick your fingers. Okay. Close enough. Alright, no cutting. Uh, favorite drink. Favorite alcoholic drink. Sake! Sake, 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 sake! Oh. Uh, any particular kind of sake? I don't know. I haven't had all that many, to be perfectly honest with you. And I don't want to do, like, product advertisement anyway uh, on this channel. But sake. I love it. Um, favorite video game? Dark Souls. I did hit that one already. Dang it. Dark Souls is my favorite game. Because I am a masochist, apparently. <laughs> and, well... I, I do remember I said it's a Parties and Parodies that the radio show I do is D&D. &D. It's like being a D&D &D character where the DM is just sadistic as all hell. And, you yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> it, it seemed a lot more realistic than keep running right and the enemies are just going to keep moving left. See Super Mario here. You know, it just, it seems kind of realistic. If I were in an actual fantasy setting like this, it would be this hard. Although, admittedly, if you play Sorcerer, then sometimes the AI just is terrible, and you can stand really far away and just get barely within range and just fire at them. That's, eh. Sorcerer is cheap. But that was not my first playthrough. I do speedrun. I am learning how to speedrun Sorcerer. Uh, because when you speedrun it, it's ridiculous. Everything is a one-hit kill on you. <laughs> You're a glass cannon, I love it. Uh, favorite book? Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein. Uh, science fiction, just, uh, it's one great big social commentary. Uh, you, should, you should read it for yourself. It's great. It's, I think it's a classic. At least in the science fiction genre. A uh, favorite movie, The Room. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. I had to go over and get that. Oh god, and I can't cut that out, because then you'll think I. Ah, never mind. Um, yeah. I love that movie. Anyway, how is your sex life? Best acting you'll... No, no, it's so bad it's good. I love the movie because it's so bad it's good, and it breaks your willing suspension of disbelief so much that you can spend the whole time pointing and laughing at it. Tommy Wiseau is brilliantly horrible as an actor, and I love it. Uh, and then just everything else that happens in the movie. Ha ha ha. Uh... <laughs> Favorite song? Um, it's either... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's Let's All Go to the Bar by Deer Tick. But it may be Go to the Bar. Le I think it's Let's, Let's All Go to the Bar. Yeah, that. Um, just, just a good drinking song, and it always gets me happy listening to that. No matter how, like, sad and depressed I am, I can listen to that song, and it just makes me just... Just, I want to, I want to headbang. Um, favorite band, Turisas. It is a metal band from somewhere in Scandinavia. Or Finland. Somewhere in that area. And they're awesome! Uh, yeah. I went and saw them in concert with my good friend Aaron DeLeo. I don't think he'd mind me saying his name. And it was epic, and we ended up picking up a drumstick from Teresas. That was golden. That was awesome. Oh yeah. Um, I, the three concerts I've been to, I picked up two picks, one at each, and then a drumstick. Or two picks, one at each of the first two, and then a drumstick. I'm just a magnet for that stuff. <laughs> um, favorite genre? That's tough. Do I say... Yeah, heavy metal, obviously. My favorite band is Turisas, but also classical. It's sort of a mood thing, to be honest with you. Um, just if I'm driving down the road, or if I'm trying to get to sleep, 
or if I'm trying to do homework, I'll listen to something nice and light and classical. But when I just want to head back, then I'll go with something like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, um, let's fix this. <laughs> Screw it, this is the new hair that you get for the, for the video. <laughs> um, favorite show? South Park. I'm going to go with South Park for this one. Um, at, at least Western shows. Maybe shows in general, but at least Western shows. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Attack on Titan as an anime. And I would love for them to get on with season two. Get on with it! Uh, soon enough, hopefully. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Avatar slash Korra is also way up there, too. Avatar The Last Airbender, Korra... The Legend of Korra, that's the full name. There we go. Uh, that's way up there. I like how the show grows up with you. So you start off episode one, will you go penguin sledding with me? And then now we're into, like, global politics expressed in cartoon fighting form. Uh, that seems cool by me. Ah, random fact time. I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to cut. So you, you'll see I did not get anything for the mouth, for the hot sauce. I'm not going to cut. Say hi. You're on camera. This is good. So here's a random fact about me. I have a baby. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm a vegetarian. Not a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. And don't you dare ask me if I eat fish. Uh, sports. I, I run cross country and track, but I don't do that so much now since I got injured, unfortunately. Uh, broke my knee trying to impress a girl that's now my wife. So it worked. Apparently it worked. So there's that. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Sorry. Uh, and favorite episode? I'm gonna say three, actually. It's tough. I'm a big fan of three and six for very different reasons. Well, Little apples and oranges, but there's the like adrenaline and testosterone side of me that just wins. That makes number three win out for that. Just I have to. Sorry. Uh, PC or Mac? Linux. Okay, PC. If I had to pick between the two, PC. Uh, I'm actually making all this on PC. Uh, ninjas or pirates? I mean, people who watch the channel all the time know that. I'm Ninja, that's a nickname of mine, and Jesus, but Ninja, Ninja. Actually, the, the channel name, uh, youtube.com slash, what is it, this user something something something, Ninjaism? That's just an old name for the channel. Uh, before I knew that I was, before I made videos, like two years or something before I made videos. Oh, poor thing. Uh, Superman or Batman? Batman! Because he doesn't need powers. He has money, but he doesn't need powers. He's the GD Batman. Okay, Aaron. Aaron, cut this off for a second. Ready? He's the goddamn Batman. That's why. Alright. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Actually, neither, to be honest. Uh, I'm not a big fan of soda. Just at all. It's not all that good for me. And you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, let's see, tea or coffee? Uh, this was tea? It was tea. That's what the start of the episode was. Uh, very good tea as well. And in fact, if you give me just a quick moment, I'm going to take you off for just a second. It's not wanting to turn for me, so I'm going to take you off and turn you 
to where you can see. Okay, that's going to mess up a little bit. Yeah, that's all tea. That's all tea. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Sorry, I'm having to speak more quietly now. I bet you can understand why. Yep. Okay. We're good now. Um, do I speak any other languages? A la sola lingua que me parolas estas Esperanto. Uh, I speak Esperanto. Uh, but that's, that's an auxiliary language. I don't fluently speak any real languages, like French. I speak a little French, but don't ask me to try to carry on a terribly fluent conversation. Uh, I just... You're eating my hair. Uh, the best part of long hair. You saw me headbanging earlier. That's the best part. The worst part is that she's eating my hair right now. It's adorable, though. Um, best D&D. 3-5. I am, uh, I am still learning 5th edition. I haven't gotten to look into it as much as I would have liked, but when Wizards was putting out playtest packets for what they called at the time D&D &D Next, uh, yeah, I was, I was kind of into it. Uh, I played those with some friends of mine. I wish that we had gotten a chance to do them on the radio, uh, to try them out, but, uh, just, we got on with the regular show instead of doing those, uh, those for filler. Uh, best Warhammer 40k, Necrons. I have Necrons. I don't have many Necrons, I have just like the base set, the core set, but I have Necrons. I sold some pieces when I uh, went to college just to make a little bit of money. Uh, my parents also thought that one was satanic, but they just thought it was a hobby, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how they thought Necrons were okay. I mean, because they did see. Uh, favorite Cards Against Humanity card. Stephen Hawking talking dirty. Is that his name Stephen Hawking or Stephen Hawkins? One of those. That guy. The guy that sounds like this when he sits in the chair. Yeah, talking dirty. Uh, do I stream? Not until after I graduate, when I have more time. Then I can stream on Twitch or whatever. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it. Lucky. He, you see, she's not turning. I think she's trying to stay asleep or get back to sleep. So I will see you later, YouTube. Bye bye. I'm just gonna have so many videos of you. I'm gonna be older and watching this and probably be a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> or a lot embarrassed. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get around to. Okay. Bye bye.